What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we back again for another episode review of The Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season eight, episode 11, first come, first served, okay? Not going to be a long review because not much really happened. It wasn't a bad episode, but it just, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just waiting for, oh my God. Y'all know what episode I'm waiting for. I'm just waiting for the one where... Um, the fight happened. I know that probably got, uh, I don't think they was recording it, but I'm, I'm waiting for something to happen like that. I mean, not like, I don't want to see them boxing, but I'm trying to get to the part where we saw on TMZ. Like, I really want to know how did that all come together? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. I ain't ratchet. Well, not today. Um, I don't want to see all that. You know, we trying to be classy because y'all look classy. Uh, so we're going to be a little classy these days. But anyway, we get up into the episode. We see that it's Wendy's son's birthday. He's now 10 years old. Her and Eddie doing a little surprise um, wake up. First of all, let me just tell you this. Don't wake me up at my sleep. <laughs> don't wake me up at my sleep to surprise me for nothing. Okay, you, wake up, you wait until I'm already up. If I'm get up to go to the bathroom, technically speaking, that means that I'm up because I had to get up to go to the washroom. So you say, surprise, that'd be fine. I might piss myself, but that'd be fine. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm in my bed and I'm like two sheets to the wind, baby, don't, don't, don't wake me up. I don't care what's the um, problem, what's the occasion or whatever. Unless the house is burning down, do not wake me up. You know, but it was cute. And he was looking the same way. He looked Cardo. He was looking like, girl, what? Y'all could have waited, you know. But um, then we get into this whole thing with Ashley and Giselle in their little athleisure wear, GNA. We find out that they don't wear underwear when they work out. Um, Kind of understandable, but then at the same time, no. Like, put something on to gather that sweat up in, in your little funk or whatever. Um, also, especially when you're going to be putting your coochie on other people, um, you know, uh, um, workout equipment if you go to a gym or whatever. At least bring a towel and clean it down, you know. Meanwhile, you got that going on. They talking about their different styles. Mind you, you got one person who barely got style and one person who don't have style at all trying to come together and do something that has already been done before. Granted, you know what? I ain't even gonna hate on them like that because I just got a feeling they stuff gonna come out and be more successful than she by Sheree. Moving on from that. Um, Karen, you know, she's talking about her being down there in Surrey County. And I don't know if y'all saw the little three-part episode special that they did for Karen, I think, like, last year. Um, you know, talking about her, either it was last year or it was in 2022. Either way, she had a little three-part episode um, special where we got a little background history about Karen and her family down in Surrey County, uh, Virginia. Is it Virginia or Maryland? I think it's Virginia. Either way. Surrey County, right? And talking about the history of the land and talking about how their land was the plantation that their family was on. Meaning the slave, their family was slave and they wound up buying the plantation that their family was slaves on. So that's some very, I wish, I wish, I'd be so jealous. I ain't even gonna lie and hold y'all. I'd be so jealous sometimes of people who can actually track back. And I'm talking about African-Americans because, unfortunately, us African-Americans, we really don't know where we came from. We don't know where we originated from. Yeah, some of us from Africa and all that stuff, but where in Africa? Where do our ancestry really, really lie and begin? And then when we get over here, we don't know, you know, exactly where our people were, what plantation, what this and all that stuff. And I just get jealous when people... Black people can actually figure that out and still have that lineage and have that history and be rich in it and and, and, and have the, the, the photos and all of the stuff. Oh, I just love stuff like that, though. So I was here for, um you know, Karen's little family history and the fact that they was able to buy that plantation. They were able to she was able to buy her grandmother's home, which was like 104 years old. That was a big issue in the little um three-part situation that she had going on that little special they was talking about the land and the secession and all of that right and so um it was cool that they was able to figure it out she was able to you know buy the land and all that stuff and karen wants to make it into like this resort 
like a, I don't know, like a vacation resort or something like a B and B or something. Bread, what is it? Bed and breakfast? I don't know. I don't know for tourism. And I'm just thinking, no shade. Like before we heard about Karen, I ain't never know nothing about no Surrey County. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't, I don't know who actually is going to come out there to Surrey County for vacation. Maybe somebody coming out there for retirement. Maybe a rest stop or whatever. But to actually be like, oh my God, let's go to Surrey County. Maybe it's a staycation for the people that's already there. But um, I don't know. But it's cute or whatever. Um, So you got that going on. She's going to invite some of the girls. And she said she can't invite all of them at the same time because of insurance purposes. I don't understand what that means because we ain't never seen nobody on these shows not be able to invite people as a whole all of the girls as a whole because of insurance reasoning and i was like girl what just say you don't want all of them there but um she wound up you know inviting she said she was gonna pull some names out of the hat so she wound up inviting um giselle wendy uh giselle wendy candace and neck well not NECA. Giselle, Wendy, Candy, Ashley. Okay. And um she didn't put out uh uh Robin A, not Chad. She didn't call uh NECA's or Mia's. And so at that point, you, you Giselle said no. We'll get to that in a second. But we did see Mia and Robin meet up. They have a little situation. And we find out, you know, that they were talking about the Surrey County situation and, you know, how Robin said she didn't get an invitation. It's a good thing that she didn't get an invitation. Mia said, well, I haven't gotten an invitation either because she hasn't sent anything out. But she, was, they, she goes into talking about how, you know, basically they're saying how um, Mia had looked up into Karen phone at one point to get something and she found a screenshot uh was it robin that said that i think robin said that it was a screenshot of her wine and the boys or something like that and he's trying to make this correlation about the fact that um you know what's her name karen has been obsessed with her for a while i mean robin if that's what you want to think go ahead and feel that way i can't i can't i'm not gonna debate you on it because you knew her longer than we knew her so Hell, you said this was from years ago and you never put it out there. I mean, kind of fits. But hey, it is what it is. Then they talk about Mia and the fact that she had, at one point, looked into getting a divorce lawyer. And, you know, of course, they don't want her, want her and Gordon to get divorced. That's basically it. Honestly, I don't care how you feel about certain people. I, I don't want to see people get divorced, get divorced or whatever when... Mm, I don't know. But with me and Gordon's situation, it's like, girl, we already kind of knew it, you know. So, hey, it is what it is. Meanwhile, um, like I said, when Karen sent the text message out for everybody, Giselle said, no, she wasn't coming. She had a little sit down with Naneka and, um, sh oh, my God, Sharice popped up. I just don't understand why they, they it's like they're forcing Sharice on us. And at this point in time, I don't know, like her whole presence bothered me because, it's just like you offer nothing to the group. You literally give nothing. Even as a friend of, you don't give anything. And I was just like, what was the point of this meetup? When Nineka and um, Giselle met up, it felt fake and phony. It felt thrown together. It felt forced. You know, and I understand that they haven't really had any time together because of all the drama, according to them. But at the same time, it's just like, it just feels so out of place. It felt out of place to me. And they really wasn't really talking about nothing, you know. And then when a text message come through, you talking about, um, she had already told just, uh, uh, Karen that she wasn't going to go because I'm not going to be on a sprint event with Wendy and um, Candace, and I already told her about that. And my whole thing is this. Girl, suck it up. If Candace can be on a sprint event with Ashley after Ashley and her literally just got into it, and Wendy on a sprint event with the NECA, like, come on. Shut up and just suck it up. Like, they giving these people too much control. If you want to say, oh, it's just entertainment, it's just entertainment, or whatever, um, we'll make these people entertain us because at this point it's getting boring. The separation is getting boring. Like, let's be adults and confront the issue sometimes. Like, 
You were wrong in both of these situations. And that's what I'm talking about when I say confront the issues. You don't want people to call you out on the fact that you was wrong in both of these situations when it comes to Wendy and when it comes to uh, Candace. And you just, you just can't. You can't accept responsibility and accountability for it. And you can't own up to it and say, I fucked up and I apologize. Because you don't apologize because you don't mean it and you don't think that you did anything wrong. And that's a dangerous person, if you ask me. Meanwhile, um, Sharice, I know who's not invited. Bitch, you wasn't a thought, okay? So let's let's just understand that, you know? I didn't I like the way Naneka was talking to her, my, her um, husband. He was trying to find his ID. And she was like, well, just go down to the hospital and go get a new one. Just go get a new one. Because I'm not going to look for this. I'm not going to do this. Just go get a new one. I'm like, damn, why does she talk to him like that? She talks to him like he's her child. And I'm just like, girl. And she started telling us about the fact that, you know, it's just a little difficult in new, with her and him because I forgot that they're newlyweds. And them being together and actually living together, that's the only issue that she has because they had a long distance relationship prior to getting married. And so now they got to get used to actually being in each other's presence every day and living with each other every single day that he's actually there for work if he's not working or whatever. Baby, the way that she was speaking about that and every time I see them, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if Naneka and her husband wind up being divorced within the next three to five years. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would be surprised if they make it to five years, okay? Meanwhile, you know, you got that. And then Karen winds up sending another text saying that everybody's invited. And, um, of course, Robin said she couldn't go because it's last minute. Girl, Robin, just say you wasn't going to go in the first place. You had no intentions of going. I just want people to be honest, all right? Um, that'll make the show be a little bit more better if you ask me. Just be like, girl, how dare you try to act now? You know damn well I ain't finna come to your stuff, okay? There it is, you know. Um, but I probably would have turned it down too. You wanna know why? Because just like what Robin said, it was a last minute thing and I had already had prior commitment. Don't hit me up the day before. Uh uh. I need I need a, I need a week in advance. Give me a few days in advance or whatever so I can see if I can put it in my schedule. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. But at the same time, Robin girl, you know you want to come in in the first place. Giselle, she just don't want to be around people. She a little bitch. But um, there's that. Uh, suck it up, okay, Buttercup. Anyway, and Naneka, you know she she gonna go. We already know that. We get to Wendy. And Eddie and I was like, you know, when we first saw them and the way that she was talking to Eddie, I was like, shut up, you know, coming up the steps and all that stuff to surprise the little boy. I said, uh, -uh what is this? Y'all try to make it seem like she got a little problems with Eddie or whatever. And then we see this scene with them going out and basically talking about the fact that they're so busy now because he has his cannabis business that he's trying to open up, um, the Happy Eddie situation. And, you know, he don't have that much time to be around her. Um, she was like, it's been a few times where I go to sleep and you, uh, without you. He was like, well, you know, I come home and you already, be, um, in the bed sleep. She was like, cause you come home like two o'clock in the morning or whatever. And I'm sitting here like, mm. What y'all trying to make it seem like it's some cracks in their marriage? Y'all trying to give that to them? Please don't, please don't do that with this couple. Because at this point, it'll seem very, very fake. Because I just, they're one of the most stable couples on this show. I'm just, outside of Ray and um, Karen, they're one of the most stable couples on this show. And I don't want to see any cracks in the facade or anything like that, okay? We got enough of that, you know? Um... But yeah, they just got to make time for each other because now it's like a different uh, realm that they are in where both of them are heavily busy at the same time. Because the way that they worked it out was if one going to be busy, one going to make sure that they don't have that much to do and vice versa. But now they're both busy at the same time. And so you got to figure stuff out and it's understandable. But I really feel like they're going to be okay. And um. I would like to hook up with the happy Eddie. Let me be a tester. Like, for real, for real. Okay? You know, um, we indulge the way that they're talking about. Have you noticed the change? And, and, and like, a few years ago, they probably wouldn't be talking about marijuana usage, any type of drug usage on, uh, on these shows, but especially marijuana usage because it was illegal. Now, every place is just about legalized it and everybody just talking about how they in, indulge in it and everything. I was like, girl, we've been doing that, but all right, it's cute. Um, moving on from that, um, 
Ugh, what else was going on? Um, Karen and Ray went on a little date and, you know, talking about the bringing the ladies and all this stuff and how, oh, he got me on this lunch day, this happy hour. He want to get toe up and all this. Girl, they really weren't talking about nothing at this point. Okay, so we're going to move on and we're going to get to them actually going to Surrey County. They were in the Sprinter van, right? And they was able to do what they had to do. You had Aneka, you had uh, Wendy, you had Candice, you had Ashley, and you had um, Karen. Now, here's the thing. Again, like I mentioned earlier, everybody got alone on the bus. Baby, when, when Ashley told them that they was finna do this uh, athleisure line with Giselle, the way... Candace and Wendy start cracking up in her face, but mostly Wendy. And Ashley gonna say, when they laugh, you know they bother. Especially when Wendy do that whole, <laughs> you know, real loud and all that stuff. She's bothered. Baby, I want to tell you this. It could be true in certain people cases, but honestly, I really do not feel like Wendy is bothered by the fact that you and Giselle having a uh, clothing line. Baby, we know that Giselle, of all people, is one of the worst dressed on this damn show. So, nobody is bothered by that, okay? Nobody is. You know, you probably better off doing it by yourself. Or um, I'm just going to be real with you. By yourself. Um, meanwhile... You got that going on. The girls stop and they go um, get a little drinky drink. Stop at the gas station. Use toilet. Wendy comes back with this margarita, gas station margarita. And she just really all loopy and everything. And it was a nice time because even at one point, you know, like I said, Candace and Gisette, no, Candace and Ashley was getting along. They go over to, uh, you know, Karen's house and meet her relatives. And, you know, it was it was very homey and it was very nice. OK, and I'm like, this is cute. This is really, really cute. You know, they was um, showing them pictures, giving them back history of the family and, you know, going out to hold uh, the tree so that the people could come in and trim it and, you know, playing tricks on Wendy about it being a snake because she don't like snakes and stuff like that, which is understandable. Oh, speaking of snakes, I'm not going to do it. I'm away. <laughs> I feel like y'all, yes, girl, it is. I just want y'all to know because pause. We're going to pause for a second. And we're not going to talk about it in the comments. But I did see, I'm just going to acknowledge this. Because I did see a few people that was asking me on Twitter. Girl, you going to do it what it is extra? You going to do it? No, I'm not. No, I am not. And you want to know why? Because I am just trying to get all of the information. Nikki's supposed to be dropping a fucking diss tape. Uh, diss track so she said she said it's not a diss track when pop craze said the diss track against megan but baby let me just tell you this it's a diss track okay i don't care what it say and um it was supposed to drop at 3 p.m her time in la but it never dropped and she said she pushed it back till 12 midnight now i don't know what midnight is is it up in my time which is 11 o'clock new york time or what is that 10 o'clock uh la time i don't know what time zone it is but we ain't heard it yet so i'm just waiting for that and then 19 we're gonna just talk about it up in what it is regular but i got a couple of things to say <laughs> and i'll tell you this it is all funny to me okay it is all funny to me, and I just see a lot of stuff that's going on, and I'm just like, girl, because I do like both ladies, but all I'm going to say is, just because Megan has not responded back to Nikki ranting online, that doesn't mean that she's scary. That doesn't mean that she's hiding. It's all strategic. It's all calculated. And all she's waiting for is for that diss track to come out so that she can come back. This has been calculated. That's all I'm going to say. All I'm going to say. Moving on from that, we'll talk more about that on Wednesday. Um, But <laughs> it is all funny to me, girl. I was like, what is happening? Girl, this is this is hip-hop. <laughs> I said, we are bringing beef back from 2005, baby. This is hip-hop. Anyway, moving on for that. Um, 
Oh yeah, I forgot to say that uh, Mia had texted uh, Karen back and said, "Girl, listen, I don't. You ain't finna give me no last minute invitation and think that I'm gonna come. No, thanks for no thanks." I said, "You know what, Mia? I ain't even mad at it, cause I feel the same way. Just like Robin, I ain't mad at you saying what you had to say either, even though I know that you just wasn't gonna come in the first place. But I'm just saying, don't give me no last minute invitation. But um, cause she was like, "Girl, I know." <laughs> second thought okay but um moving on from that yeah they get to a point where they go and they sit down and have some uh lunch or whatever right it was real cute seeing them running seeing them getting along and everything and you just knew that wasn't gonna last 100 percent of the whole trip because you know at one point when they was out there at uh candace had found a wishbone you know and uh, a wishbone tree branch, right? And her and Ashley like broke it or whatever. They poured it and all that stuff. So they was being cool with each other. And Ashley even reflected on that, you know, after they was thanking Karen for inviting them down there and how, you know, it seems beautiful, nice and common and whatever. And, you know, she was like, um, this is just like the type of environment that we needed. I just want us to get to a point where, you know, it's hope for everybody to hash out their differences or whatever because, you know, even me and Candace was even getting along for the most part. And then it's like, I still feel like it's some hope for you and Wendy, uh, Nanaka and Wendy to, uh, you know, have a little, you know, be cool or whatever. Wendy ain't open to it. And I understand it because here's the thing. Do I feel like Wendy is dragging it? No, because Nanaka started dragging it first. And again, I will continue to iterate and say that if you had a problem with Wendy and her family or mostly her family and saying that these people was doing this and you heard that your her mama did this and did that, you should have brought it directly to Wendy. And that's where Nanaka had worked, uh, messed up. Now, if she would have brought it the next, the, directly to Wendy, they could have talked it out like grown adults, like grown women. And instead, no, we get it in front of everybody else. You tell it to everybody else and then you tell it to the public. And you expect this person to want to be receptive to you each and every time you, quote unquote, attempt to try to make nice, not necessarily apologize or try to come to some type of compromise or agree to disagree type of thing. No, you just want to kind of sweep it under the rug. And like she already said early in the, se in the season, her thing is, regardless of if I get into it with you, I'm still try to play nice. That's what Nanaka really said. Go back and watch it, okay? In a couple of, a few episodes ago before the break. um, And my thing is, because she had invited all the girls to her home for like this lingerie slumber party type of thing, including Wendy and Candace, not Candace, but Ashley was like, well, Wendy, she invited you or whatever. So, you know, um, how you feel about that? And she basically was like, she has no interest in going. And I don't blame her because you didn't even, you acting like nothing happened or whatever. And like, she's supposed to just be okay. And you know, I don't take olive branches like that. My olive branches is, us having a conversation and you admitting that, you know, you went about this whole situation wrong. That's the olive branch that I need. Okay. And even after that, I still don't want to be up in your house because I'm not going to be faking phony with you, you know? And my whole thing is this, like, why would you want to invite somebody to your home that you claim and you already accused their family of harming you and all this stuff or whatever, trying to do harm and trying to do spells and calling the mama witch and uh, uh, doing, you know, shrines and all this stuff or whatever and talking so negatively about them. And then you want to say, you know, but when you curse at people and all this stuff and she was like, girl, you called me a bitch. OK. And then she said what she said back to you. I said, now, girl, the neck, we're not finna rewrite history, okay? She was like, well, you cursed at a person. What you think they're gonna say? Girl, she said, don't bring that shit to me or whatever. She said it in a sentence. And I got exactly what Wendy was saying. She wasn't cursing you out. That's just like everyday talk when we put a curse word in um, the midst of a sentence just to fill a sentence up. That's just what it is when we pissed out. She wasn't telling you or calling you shit or anything like that. When you directly right after that called her a bitch. She never called you out your name. She never disrespected you in that matter. You've been disrespecting her and her family since day one. So, girl, you can dismiss me with that. And like she said, I have no desire of being around anybody or being with anybody that has no benefits to my life. <laughs> oh, so I don't bring no benefit. No, you don't. Baby, we don't even know you. Okay. To this day, even with the whole thing about you, all we know is that you're trying to get pregnant. That's it. 
<laughs> what, what else can we it, 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 it's giving very much Phaedra Parks <laughs> y'all remember when Phaedra came on there and Phaedra said she was a lawyer we was like girl when we, when we gonna see you up in the courtroom for real for real instead of outside you know taking money from um taking cash in the parking lot baby the real housewives I am so have y'all been on Twitter I know most of y'all been on Twitter but Y'all been on Twitter when they was doing Bravo put up that uh, tweet saying that one Bravo clip and everybody was putting up the Real Housewives of Atlanta clips and everything. And I was just going through it and I was like, oh my God, Real Housewives of Atlanta really was that show back in the day, girl. And I hate that we have to talk about it like that because we have to be real with ourselves, whether we like it or not. The show has lost its luster. The show has lost its, you know, oomph in that thing. And honestly, I feel like just about every reality show is going through that right about now. Because that was their weakest season last. Uh, their last season was their weakest season. Real Housewives of Potomac weakest season was the end of last season and this season. Married to Medicine weakest season is season 10, which is crazy because it's your 10th season. And you would think that that would be your strong season. That's, that's, that's a, that's a mark. That's a, that's a anniversary number. Like that's a big thing. You made a 10th season. It should be like, wow. But it's like, dud. Okay. It's like, boop. You know, that's just how it is. You got some of the shows that I actually reveal their weak as hell right about now too. Y'all, if you watch my, my channel, you know exactly what shows I'm talking about. I don't know. Something about this, 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 these seasons and it ain't got nothing to do with like the strikes or whatever. It's just what they're giving us is just not it or we're like outgrowing it or whatever. But I don't know. I'm still hanging in there. I still hope everything gets better. Um, but, um, yeah, that was basically the episode, y'all. <laughs> nothing much. I'm telling y'all. But y'all tell me how y'all felt about it and it was cute. It wasn't heavy. Um, not too much. The men coming together next week i would like to see how that goes okay after the whole contentiousness between you know uh happy eddie and um Nineke's husband so you won't know me for real eddie you trying to say that you don't know me nigga i don't know you and if i did i really just don't care okay like who gets mad <laughs> We ain't had no, we ain't talked on the phone. We ain't kick it. We ain't do none of that. So why are you mad, baby? We are Facebook friends. Facebook friends does not mean we are real friends in real life. Moving on from that, girl, y'all tell me how y'all feel. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy and please, please, please have a happy, happy week, okay? And I'll see y'all later. Peace.